that. We are recording. So, hello from the One Plus Armor crew. I'm almost in the shop. Have to cuddle over here with Nick. Hey, buddy. How oh, you yeah, doing? Man. Sniff them pits. Yeah. All right. So we were here the yeah, night before bad. Capital City Bloodbath. Did some setup. Well, this is with some setup. Andrew's been doing all the real work because we're not really involved in it. <laughs> not at all. Um, we're bastards. So we did a, did a battle report that we just uh, just finished filming. Just finished the wrap up. We're here with some beers, just enjoying the wonderful hotel we have here at the U.S. the airport Hilton. Yeah. Hilton right. Garden Inn in Ottawa. Uh, so, you guys looking forward to this? For those of us that are going to be there? Absolutely, I'm crazy I'm excited. Yeah. yeah, this has been a long time coming. I know Andrew's been putting a shitload of work into this between the tables being built and all the organization and everything. Yeah, yeah hopefully it all comes together tomorrow. It looks uh, pretty darn amazing, I gonna admit. <laughs> yeah. The tables, uh, at least the ones you put together. Uh, just, just my tables. The other guys, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Chris is good. His tables are good too. But I really like his. They got that weird color contrast with the really dark tables and then the the yellow grass. Yeah, yeah that works well too. But they, they, they seem generic, which is fine because it's a it's a tournament, right? Yeah. But your theme tables. It's like you're playing a game. You're, you're almost saying, I want to be on that table next. Please, please, please. You know, like so. That's that's really neat. Yeah. yeah, there's some cool stuff. I mean, even our worst tables are still better than some of the stuff I've seen in tournaments. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. And the yeah. amount of room, and it's just yeah. like a oh, good yeah. atmosphere. Like the prize support from uh, local companies, uh, the organization is fantastic. Uh, the space, there's so many tables. Like there's just yeah. so much breathing room. Like majority of the tournaments that I've played in, like you're like walking around people. It's really tight space. You're rubbing asses. Yeah, all the time. pretty yeah. much. Yeah. It yeah. starts to smell like fucking taint and fart juice and it's, it's disgusting <laughs> but this is this is awesome though like the amount of players that you guys signed up and uh, I, it's I'm, I'm not going to be a part of it unfortunately uh, but I'm excited to see all the video well, we can't sweep the whole tournament right Perfect. so we're gonna yeah. the so MVP has to sit out you know make sure that some local gets the uh, there you go <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, the ven the venue is absolutely huge here. I think it was originally supposed to be two at the conference rooms. It got expanded to three. Yeah. So there's there's enough room between the tables that you can have the chairs slid back and you can stand in front of them and they're just barely going to touch for the people behind you doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's quite nice. And the chairs will be nice because it's a it's, pretty uh, it's good padded ones. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's because it's a crazy schedule. It's four games yeah. tomorrow, no dinner up until eight p.m. Like yeah. this is real kind of tournament hammer. Yeah. Yeah. But catered lunch both days. Yes, that's that's nice. Very yeah. good plan. That's how we roll in Ottawa. Yeah, catered lunches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Guess he. <laughs> no pussy tournaments. Just right. six games. Let's do it. Yeah. So just to overview the tournament, we've got Andrew as one of the TOs, and then uh, Chris Haynes from Can Hammer is one of the other TOs. Yeah. And there's one other guy, Jason, someone or other, who's sort of a silent partner, and he's doing the terrain or some of the terrain. Yeah, he's uh, he came in sort of last minute, and he brought. A bunch of terrain with them and sort of like the can the get-go attitude of wanting to be involved in a big tournament like this and it's great uh, mm -hmm. when he came in we already had a lot of the the paperwork done for it but we do have plans in the works for next year already and he's gonna be a, a way bigger part of that excellent Sweet. I, I can definitely see Capital City Bloodbath growing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that being said, like, uh, maybe a little foresight, like, when do you think you want to run something like this again? Just for, like, our viewers, like, if you want to be a part of this, like, if you're from a far distance and say, like, yeah, I got some money, let's go down and kick some Canadian ass. Yeah. If you're from America, I don't know. But when do you think you might want to do something like this again? I uh, will do it, like, the same time next year, so. That's awesome. Uh, next August, eventually. Yeah. Um, we sort of, from the time of saying, okay, we're going to run this tournament to the time we're actually hosting it, wasn't as long as other tournaments have. Okay. So I feel that hurt us a bit in the long run in terms of uh, signups and stuff. But like, as of tonight, the day before, we have 44 signups. That's pretty sweet. That's good for our first time out. Um, usually tournaments sort of uh, promote six months in advance, and we only promoted four months in advance. So. That extra two months might get more people, and I won't I won't let the cat out of the bag now. But we do have sort of bigger plans for next year. Maybe at the recap for the tournament video we do, uh, I'll talk about that again. Mm -hmm. And we should know that 44 people for a fantasy tournament, especially in Canada, is actually 
really, really big. Like the big tournament that made sort of the news recently was Wet Coast GT in Vancouver. They had 16 people. Oh, yeah. And that won was by a Tomb King, King player. Won by a Tomb King. King. By a Tomb King player. Yeah, like, I'm just thinking, <laughs> There's like, hope for you, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one of the bigger tournaments in the Northeast is Du Bois GT down in New York. I think oh, it's in New York. Yeah. 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 Uh, which is a gorgeous location. I highly recommend anyone go. I haven't been myself yet. I was hoping to this year, but we'll see how money works out. Uh, me, I'm on a contract. Yeah. So Andrew's going to be there. Maybe. 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 Yeah. Anyway, um, they're a huge tournament, and I think Fantasy last year, they got like 60-some people. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, well, 44 is enormous. Along that line of thought, uh, as uh, Chris is mentioning for our viewers, I know when I've ever Googled Warhammer tournaments, it's kind of hard to find them. So what I think we can do is if you check the Facebook page uh, quite often, I think as we hear of them, we'll post it on the Facebook page, give you the details, uh, so that we can be kind of your, your source for Warhammer, Warhammer tournaments in uh, you know, at least Canada and yeah, Northern US, because yeah, yeah. yeah. um, it might be a little tough for us to be hitting those uh, South Texas uh, <laughs> tournaments, but at yeah. least it, you know, within, yeah. a, within a 10 hour drive from uh, Ottawa maybe. And yeah. I know we've got, well, let's see, what, 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 what tournaments have you been to this year? This year? Well, to be fair, I'm not a super hardcore tournament goer. Like I'll, I'll pick and choose maybe a couple good yeah. ones. Otherwise, you've been to a few though, right? Yeah, so uh, I've been to like a couple regional ones, so there was one in Kingston in July. Yep. I went to that. Uh, before that, I went to uh, Crossroads GT, which is in Hartford, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a really good tournament. If like anyone's in the area, or yeah, if anyone's in the area, check it out. They got really nice terrain, uh, solid setup. I think they had seventy-five people at the end of it, which is like a wicked turnout. Um, that was in the end of April, yep. and then two weeks before that was a, a small one in Petawawa, Ontario, a small military town. Uh, Logan, you and I yep, went to I that one. Oh, well. yep. Yeah, you were there you were. too, that's right. You played Team Kings? I did. You uh, played Team Kings. Yep, yeah. yeah. you uh, were yeah. a couple points ahead of the wooden spoon. I, I was like third from the bottom. Yeah. As long as I'm not at the bottom, I'm fine with that. I got my last tournament, I got the uh, wooden spoon of the dice. Yeah, that yeah. guy's dead. It was dice, but yeah. Okay, to be fair, I fought Haynes' dwarf army on a battle of the past. Yeah, with the slowest <laughs> army Come in the on. game. Like, yeah, that did Oh my, you, then you were mentioned in his podcast. Yep. Was that? Yeah, yes, you were. You were. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's like, I played a guy in the Battle for the Pads, it was the worst matchup ever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because yeah, he's, he's he, marching for it. He expressed his sympathies. Though. Yeah, he did. Oh, well, thank you, Chris. <laughs> you're famous. <laughs> yeah, so, true. anyway, basically what I'm going at here is we, we do have a pretty healthy uh, presence at the tournament. So, a Andrew's been to a lot more than, than the rest of us, at least in terms of the, the bigger ones internationally. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I've been to the Petawawa. I've been to two of the Petawawa tournaments so far. We ran another one in Ottawa a while ago, which I think was a 16-man tournament in February. Ah, uh, that was in January. Yeah, you were at that as well, I think, actually. Yeah, I had to play. It was the ringer again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Center Town Warhammer Club. Yeah, uh, they were running that one. And then, uh, what else? Uh, what in, in March, I went to uh, the Northern Defenders uh, uh, NE Open, which is in Quebec City. Another amazing tournament. Uh, the NE Boys. Uh, they're a Quebec-based uh, Warhammer group, and they sort of incorporate all the cities in Quebec, and then have like their own forum and stuff. And it's really well organized. Like, probably one of the best tournaments I've ever been to. Uh, terrain is amazing. Those guys like kicked it out. The food is top-notch. It's not just you know like we ordered in a bunch of pizzas. It's we got cooks there making really good food. Uh, everyone's super friendly, and even though it is Quebec. Uh, it's very... Yeah. Why are you smiling? I'm from Quebec. <laughs> Even though it's Quebec. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm from Quebec. <laughs> well, Quebec, Quebec is a French province. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, a yeah. lot of people are like, oh, well, I don't know if I want to go there because I won't be able to speak the language. Yeah. All those guys know English. Uh, yeah. It's mostly an English-based tournament anyways, and just, I can't say enough good things about those tournaments. Uh, they have one coming up. Nick and I are going to Chaos the Dick. It's sort of like yeah. they're... Uh, yeah. Team 1 plus ever. Yeah. Uh, it's sort of like their uh, pre-warm-up to the ND Open, which is their bigger tournament. And I went last year, it's in Montreal. It, it, it's such a good tournament. I think you'll be impressed, Nick. It's your first time going out, but yeah. you know, those guys really know how to run tournaments and I can't say enough good things about them. Yeah, yeah maybe we'll give you guys a bit of a heads up on the 
list, the crazy list I think we're bringing. It's a little early now, we're still working through it and don't want to give our opponents too much uh, advanced notice, but yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So one, one, of the, one of the great things I found just speaking of Quebec, I guess, is even the people who do speak predominantly French that show up for these events, I mean the rules are pretty, they translate relatively well. Yeah, exactly. So even if you can't really talk to the person across from you, you're still playing the same game and enjoying it. Well, you know, dice, you know, you're going to be able to like gesture and stuff. Like, I think it's very, very rare that uh, you can't communicate whatsoever with the person across yeah. from you. Most well, Even when I used to live in France, for example, I played Warhammer there. You go into a store, I mean, you're just talking about models and rules and everything. You can get your point across really easily. Well, it, and if you can understand somebody from France, you're definitely fine. <laughs> yeah, you're fine to go back. They yeah. speak English half the time. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. more of a bird language. And a little bit off the subject, sorry to cut you off. The uh, the Quebec City is gorgeous. Oh, it's yeah, amazing. It's absolutely. Very nice. Amazing food, too. Uh, there's, yeah. some really, there's some great restaurants there. That's probably one of the nicer cities in the whole continent, I would, I would guess, yeah. because it's, it's got a lot of history. It's a just beautiful place. I've, I've never stayed there, but I've driven through it a few times, and it's wonderful. I, I, I've, I've been quite a bit, not recently, not in the last four or five years, but I've been quite a bit uh, from Quebec. And, uh, but yeah, it's very beautiful, definitely recommend. That's a good point. Yeah. So, but, uh, uh, what? let's just go over quickly, uh, what are you bringing tomorrow? All right, well, I'll bring my Vampire Counts, because my Warriors of Chaos are not done yet. They will be for the next tournament, but not yet. Uh, so I'm running, uh, well it's a 2400 point tournament, so I'll just give you the super quick breakdown. I've got my Blender Lord, level 4 Wizard, level 1 Wizard, uh, Necromancer, uh, 2 Banshee, uh, big horde of, uh, horde of ghouls, 15 skeletons, uh, 40 zombies, just running in ranks of 5, horde of graveguard, uh, 40 for them as well, and then 2 units of spirit hosts, uh, of single spirit hosts, I should say, so very effective chaff in most of the cases, except against wood elves. Um, <laughs> five hex wraiths and a terror geist. That's uh, that's a mean list. Yeah, it, I'm hoping hoping to do better than I usually do. Most of the tournaments I've been to, I usually get up. I think for the two tournaments I've been to, at least so far, yeah. I'm up at top table in second oh, or third round, nice. <laughs> and then get shit off yeah. and fall back down. It's always what happens in the four round tournaments I play in, I'm in top table, third game, and then straight down to sixth place. Oh, um, so I'm hoping to have better luck this it's time. It's a bit of a deviation from the the army that you posted uh, recently. Yes, it is, a, it is a little bit different. I made some last minute changes. So That's originally, fair. Yeah, I was running, originally I was running two units of 20 zombies, and I was using those to bunker, and I was using dire wolves. Um, and what I found is the spirit hosts make much better chaff. They're ethereal, aren't they? They are ethereal, oh, so it's, yeah. it's much more specific of what can actually do wounds to them. So, and they won't die from shooting on their way there. That's the biggest problem. Well, that, you know, that I can see from my army in particular would be yeah. a problem. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm usually good at clearing chaff because games just throw jabs yeah. at them. But if it requires magic, there's only, like, especially if you have individual spirit hosts, it's tough for one a magic missile yeah. at just exactly. one spirit host. And, and you've got the hex race to worry about. Yeah, those and the terror guys. I learned that the uh, yeah. hard way. The hex race. Yeah, exactly. So there's, it's, it's, Basically, the idea behind the list now is it's very tough target priority for the opponent player. Absolutely. Because either they kill the stuff that isn't going to do a lot of damage, and they let the really heavy stuff through, like the Hex Wraith and the Terror Geist. Yeah. Or they target the big stuff, like the Hex Wraith and the Terror Geist, and then sit there slamming their head against the wall with the Spirit Host for a couple turns. Yeah. Plus, again, they're Wood Elves. Um, uh, but in both those cases, either they devote their army to taking out my core, which is huge hordes, or they take out the chaff and the outliers. So I'm usually able to get my really heavy units into combat. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. So what are you bringing? Well, uh, I'm just going to preface this with a bit of a history. I haven't played Warhammer in seven years. I'm going to be kind of the newbie hammer guy here. Um, started back in the spring and just finished paint, painting the last model, like the base colors roughly, uh, today. Uh, pick Lizardman because, uh, to me, a crocodile-looking hero on a T-Rex-looking monster is enough to, uh, yeah, enough to attract me to the army. It's pretty badass. Uh, it's a badass yeah. model, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, right now my army is more along the lines of cool model army, less kind of tournament 
Ultra Killy. Oh, you're getting pretty close to that skin cord, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah eventually. Yeah. Yeah. You have what, six units of skins? Uh, actually, only four. Oh, okay. But next I will. List. Next list. I'm slowly <laughs> phasing up the Saurus to add more skins. People hate them. They just run around and throw darts and kill things yeah. that they probably they're shouldn't. Amazing chef. Yeah, and then, you know, somebody, you know, they kill a unit of skinks and they cheer them like, you got 70 points, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. But your army is fantastically painted. Like, it, it's beautiful. Yeah, it is amazing. absolutely Oh, beautiful. thanks. I've been working pretty hard. I, I still got to do a lot of the details on the rest of the models, but that will come. And yeah. uh, um, So, yeah, I guess the list. Um, a lot of plates have stained. I tried to do the Carnosaur Lord. That doesn't really work. I um, used to run a little Skink Priest, but magic's pretty important. So, obviously, went with the Party Slam. He's got all the tools, he's got the channel. Party Slam? Yeah, it's what called. Ex explain this term. Uh, just because he's got everything. So uh, he's got the harmonic conversions where you can roll three channeling attempts, the channeling oh, okay. staff. So you've got rolls channels on a five or six. So I usually get one channel at least per round. Yeah. Sometimes I roll three fives and I end up with three channels. Uh, he's got uh, the lower master on high magic. Um, I, a lot of people talk about wandering deliberations where you can get each signature spell of each lore. Okay. Um, but the thing with uh, lore master, the high magic for the at least the lizardman is you can swap spells out. Yep. But you rely on actually casting them. So if somebody's pretty efficient at dispelling you, then uh, if you don't successfully cast it, you can't swap it out. Uh, and then sometimes you can make a mistake like I've done before, swapping out a spell that at the end of the game would have been just yep. like walk between worlds or whatever. So we'll see. Um, I will eventually try that. So yeah, I got the party sign. He's got Soul of Stone, so I hopefully I can protect him against miscasts because he's been sucked into the warp point. I, I'm at the brink of a 20 nil or at least a 15 5 win, and then he gets sucked into the warp and uh, it goes downhill from there. Um, so yeah, I got the, the big slant. I got the Scar Veteran on uh, Carnosaur uh, just because I really like the model. Some people, the people that play a lot of Warhammer aren't too afraid, the people that don't play a lot of Warhammer are really afraid, so then he may not do a lot of damage, but I can dictate sometimes movement, because they'll just avoid him. Yep. Uh, Scar Veteran on a Cold One, uh, which is the Lux Stone, he's my BSB, uh, and a Skin Priest level 1 to carry the scroll and uh, go Beast and just y sends my units. And you're saying cast through him as well, right? Magic missiles, yeah, magic missiles and direct damage spells. So that's nice. So I can keep my slant in the back and just feed magic through him to different units that I want so I can keep him relatively uh, protected. I have a unit of 30 Saurus uh, with the command just to give me some steadfast combat unit. Uh, if I get a opponent like a Skaven with the Dread 13th, I can put him in there and not worry too much about getting him turned into a clan rat. Yeah, four units of ten skinks, uh, javelins. I opted without commands, without any co um, command models, because the ten points per adds up, and you have to remove magic. But that might be that might hurt me this turn because there are some scenarios that require command models to capture objectives and whatnot. Oh, so, that's true. I forgot about that. Yeah, so uh, that might bite me in the ass, but we'll see. Um, I have a Bastilodon with the solar engine because um, he's nice to protect flanks, he's got an extra magic missile that I can try and take out to spell dice or get a free shot. Um, yeah, magic, <laughs> the magic missile. <laughs> yeah, uh, five cold one knights with the champion and standard. Um, I just like him, not a lot of Lizzie and players do. I like them, they're pretty good at clearing chaff and getting uh, in the flanks. Um, Ancient Stegodon with the sharpened horns and two salamanders, and I think that as separate units. So I think that's my list. The goal here is to give a bit of a target saturation. So if you're a horde army, you if you don't go for the salamanders and you kill my big monsters, well they'll flame your toughness three horde units. Uh, if you go for them, then you're going to get thunder stomped to death. Uh, I lose just about every game, so I don't know if I'm working it well, but we'll see. Uh, you know, I'm, we're here to learn, and I grudged, uh, I think, a top contender, and uh, we'll yeah. see tomorrow. Either I'll be <laughs> in the top table game two, or playing uh, second last place. <laughs> yeah. You just gave that guy his first easy win? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm guaranteeing that if I do really well afterwards, I won't play him again. Who That's knows? true. Get it out of the way. You get it yeah. out of the way. So, you know, when I end up at top table, it's not against him, so I get him out of the way. To be fair, like, uh, 
the guy we're talking about, he's bringing a, a fairly netless Skaven list. Uh, Will. Yeah. Well, yeah, Will Paul, uh, he's a local guy in Ottawa here. Um, I think your list is fairly well mixed enough and have all the tools you need to sort of deal with some of the, mm -hmm. the douchebaggery he's going to be bringing to the <laughs> table. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you play it right... Just got to play my cards right, right. I think. Uh, you know, I could... I'll see maybe mid-game or early game. If it's not going to work out, I can try and pull back and... Yeah, for sure. Go for like a minor loss and whatnot, or maybe even the draw, or if a couple of good things go up, try to capitalize on some mistakes or some yeah. luck rolls. And just be ready the one, one suit. So this list centers around a block of 100 clan rats with mm -hmm. uh, Screaming Bell. Yeah. Just keep in mind, those things are uh, unbreakable, right? Because of that? The cheesy shit he It's unbreakable because it's with the bell? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, then I didn't know that. Oh, okay, the, that's good. The cheesy shit he does is even if he loses combat, he's got the grace here, everything like is in leadership nine, nine or ten. Reform, so your rear faces them. So, oh no, one lower combat res on a hundred guys and you can never attack the bell. Yeah. So you have to burn through a hundred wounds basically before you can get to it. Mm -hmm. So just be ready for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the, the trick with that, <laughs> wow. is, is save save your skinks. If you have if you ever even if it engages them, just get the flank so he can't reform. Yep. Because uh, the pain rats aren't very dangerous on their own, right? Yeah, skinks are still toughness too, so you might be able to kill uh, some off. But if it's clan rats, you you'll be fine. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's an even match. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, that's just to give you a warning. That's the cheesy uh, shit that happens with that yeah, list. Yeah, I didn't know that. Okay, so they're unbreakable, and you can just reform. Oh, yeah, well, that's good. That, well, we'll see what happens, you know, um, I'll try to, I can swap spells and, you know, you can try to um, uh, Spirit Leech the Grace here, maybe get a lucky roll, roll four, he rolls a one, and yeah, he can roll one, because he's got two plus magic resistance. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Magic resistance? Yeah. Uh, he's got magic resistance three, yeah. uh, and then, uh, sorry, no, what is it, he's got a, a four up, uh, five up board, and then magic resistance three from the bell, or some combination. Oh, uh, like so that. great series, yeah. probably yeah. two plus. Oh, so yeah. Then, yeah, that might not work. <laughs> Fire yeah, complication it just solves all the problems. Yeah. Fire complication, but he'll have to roll enough, and you'll still kill stuff. Yeah, but uh, I guess what does the bell give magic resistance to? I think I think it's magic resistance too. So the guy must have a four board on. Oh, so if I do thirty wounds, he'll save ten, 10 of them, and if I can kill twenty clan rats a turn, at least it'll yeah. he'll have to commit to um, his casting dice to dispelling it, and it's a nineteen plus, so yeah. Yeah. that's not easy to dispel, you know. So yeah. yeah, we'll see what happens, you know. It'll be a fun game. Yeah, or I can Y send some source, and hopefully they can start going through. Uh, start chopping. Through. You start chopping through a hundred clan rats, you know, because if I get them down to forty nine, then I'll have points. points. So I'll have to do some build. Uh, 50 clan rats, 51 clan yeah, rats. That's a good point. The, the tournament is running very, very, very light comp, but I think the biggest thing is half points for units that are half gone or fleeing, uh, mm -hmm. and same for monsters and riders and things. Yeah. Uh, Chris, any comments on the tournament? I wish I was there. Yeah. They were able to play. I mean, there's going to be a Tomb Kings player there. I hope he fucking does awesome. Yeah. yeah, My, yeah. I'm rooting for him. So, uh, but I'm. I'm quite anxious to see who goes on top. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys are you're filming the final table. Yeah, we're going to film the we're, final table. Yeah, we're going to film top table for everything. We've got enough enough space that we're going to film all of them. Uh, they're probably going to get posted as raw footage. What I'd like to see if we can do, and this probably won't happen, but you never know, is to try to sit down with the guys here and also Chris from Canhammer and just do a commentary over top of them. But yeah. I know that's not going to happen live because all of us are going to be too busy, mm -hmm. especially the TOs. Uh, but maybe down the road. But worst case, we'll post the raw footage on the channel. Yeah, uh, and we can we can just get, get interviews as well and stuff. Yeah, like so that. we are going to have full coverage. We're going to have interviews with all the players, especially the people on top table. Well, not all the players. No, no, no not all the players. We're going to have a <laughs> lot of interviews, uh, but we're going to go around showcase the armies. As yeah, well. absolutely. Sure. We're going to have a ton of ton of content up on Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, Camp Hammer forums, and websites. Probably going to have yeah. great coverage of it. Uh, and yeah, we're going to have a whole bunch of videos. Um, so Andrew, you're ringing for this tournament. If uh, you have to play it, what are you running? If I have to play, I'm not actually going to ring. I'm going to pay my, my money and okay. actually compete. Just because if I'm playing anyways, like I might as well be trying yep. partner. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think 
anyone who's, who's following our, our channel knows my list. Uh, I posted in the vlog and apparently the demons won out. Really? So you're taking the demons? Yeah, so I have the demons. Uh, yeah. I did have to make those tweaks because I guess my last list was uh, slightly illegal. <laughs> uh, just, I think I was like 20 points under costed on my, my core block. So I dropped the Nurglings and just added more Plague Bearers. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's the same list though. So a great unclean one, uh, Epidemius. I think I have 46 now plague bearers. Uh, Herald the Nurgle with the the ability that gives the plague bear block a regen. Mm -hmm. Two beasts of Nurgle, uh, the Soul Grinder. Who Jesus? Yeah, what a disappointment. And then uh, four uh, plague drones. Uh, there's not really a lot of finesse to my army, it's basically just push forward and... Yeah, you don't have a lot of drops. Not a lot of drops and there's no trickery in my list, it's basically I'm going to come for you and I'm going to get my tally up and then I'm going to stomp you, hopefully. Yeah, oof, I learned that the hard way. Yeah. 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 What, what do you think your list is going to uh, struggle against? Uh, high armor saver army, so Empire Cav lists uh, with a steam tank. Uh, Warriors lists that have like a lot of foot guys on sh with shields. There was a Brett army out there with uh, four lance formations. I'll be okay. A light council would fuck you up. Light council, yeah. That uh, are those your lists would be a nightmare. <laughs> well, no, there, there's only one of against undead or is it demons. It's no, demons. It's, uh, uh, is that banishment have flaming? No. I'll be fine. Are you just you it's gotta re-roll re -roll ward saves. Yeah, right? but you get the four up or get four up regen anyway. Regen is not a ward save. So oh, no, yeah. what's your regen? Four up. Put the ward saves five up. So it's not that much worse. Unless unless I can hit it with a flaming attack first and then banishment. Yeah, that would be smart. It'd have to happen in the same phase though. It so could. you need like a flaming magic Very attack. Possible. Well isn't it's the, in the lore of light. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shem's brain gaze. Yeah. The first uh, signature spell is a flaming light. Sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. Well, you have to combo it up. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, I'll know that's coming and I'll try to stop it. Oh, I'll let your flaming attack go through. Why not? It's only going to do a couple of guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anything with high armor is going to sort of shut me down. Um, at least until the tally gets going, because then that's when my army gets better, is once the tally starts going. It's funny because the tally, like the first one, is fine. You know, you're not too worried. It's a little harder. But you don't realize by turn four or five how much harder yeah. it is killing guys. It so gets like, ridiculous. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. once it's maxed out, you're rerolling your ward saves. So okay, you can have your flaming attacks. <laughs> I now reroll my ward saves and killing blow. So even that high armor stuff, as long as you're mounted or on foot, mm -hmm. uh, as long as you're not a monster, I'm I'm taking you out. Yeah. And yeah. It's it's rough. It, it's a good it's a good list, but it's not a very it's a lowbrow list. It's just I push forward. I do what I do. Yeah. So for anyone watching who doesn't know how that combination works, Epidemius is one of the heroes you can take, and the demons and Nurgle are called demons army. Period. And for every wound anything with uh, any demon of Nurgle does, he adds to a tally. Basically, you just take it's, it off. It's not just demons and Nurgle. Oh, it's anything Mark and Nurgle. Mark and Nurgle. Okay. Funny story, sort of side note, uh, at the ND Open this year I played last round a Warriors of Chaos guy who brought, oh, no. who brought all Nurgle Warriors and all his wounds he did against me also made my tally better, so by turn like two, we hit each other, I, I got my tally up a bit, he attacked me back, got my tally up again a bit <laughs> for me, and by turns like four or five, I had him table just because he made my tally for me, essentially, and it just made my army ridiculous. So yeah, the way it works is seven wounds, you get plus one strength, 14 wounds plus one toughness, 21 wounds killing blow, 28 wounds reroll ward saves. So basically, plate bears end up with like strength five, toughness five, killing blow, and rerollable five plus ward save. And that's just your basic trooper, so yep. the heroes are better, what do I play the lords here? are better, Everything else, like it, it's yeah. just, it's a gross combo. If it works, if you kill Epi, it all goes away. Yeah. So you know. It's run away behind the tower. Yeah. yeah. Epi usually is piecing out <laughs> most of the game, just running away from yeah. stuff. So Nick, what what are you worried about with your list? Everything. Everything. <laughs> if you play wizard men, shit lizard men play. It should be lizard, lizard men shit. players say. Well, uh, no, to be honest, because when I started playing this army in the art, kind of 
local meta, there wasn't a lot of tank or uh, tanks. Uh, cannons. Wrong game. Yeah. Yeah, wrong game. A lot of cannons. So then, you know, monsters run free, do their thing and whatnot. And uh, but I'm learning once you go to tournaments, like the minimum thing seems to be two cannons. And so then it's open season for my monsters. But uh, um, yeah, yeah, artillery heavy armies. If they're infantry heavy armies, then I'm pretty happy about that. If there's a lot of monstrous cav, I'm pretty happy about that because of all the D3 wounds on my Carnosaur and Stegodon. Um, high armor save armies, I would be pretty happy about um, just because of the magic. But yeah, the artillery armies are definitely the uh, the scary ones for me. So like the dwarf, the empire, the ogres. You? Whew, what elves? <laughs> just have bad experiences against them. I'm gonna hazard a guess that wood elves are gonna be the top table. Uh, uh, I don't okay. see it. No, probably not though. Why not? I thought they'll that win. Book is amazing. They'll win. No, they're not amazing. They're good. They're, not they're good. Amazing. They'll win consistently, but they're not going to win like 20 nils. And it's mm -hmm. those those yep. those guys who are going to be top table. Like, what else would be like middle of the pack, maybe top 10, but... Yeah. The trick for playing is... They got to be retarded to be first turn. Yeah. Or well, table one. if you have a mobile list against them, they can do sort of like the windshield wiper and get them into the corner. If you're fast enough to get there and do anything, you can table them. Well, maybe it's just because the book is so new and people have just jumped on that fast cab wood elf list. But yeah. they have a lot of tools like the unstoppable eternal guard that, you know, our stubborn leadership nine weapon skill five regular trooper. Like the trick against them though is if you can't kill them, just avoid them. Because all they can do is whittle away. Yeah. So especially against my army, what I do just because I've had horrible luck actually trying to get there and kill them, is just sit put my ethereal stuff as far away as humanly possible from everything. Because true shot true fight arrows will kill them. And just have Why the rest true fight are they magic? Magic. Yeah. I didn't know they were magical. Yeah. Oh. And then just have everything else sit there. Yeah. Sit and wait in the corner, constantly six dicing invocation in the heck, getting all my wounds back, just denying points. Yeah, I guess you could do that. I don't know what my answer would be. My answer would be as soon as a source character touches them, it's going bad for them. Well, even they're elves with no armor, so your yeah. skinks, your skinks will your skinks will wreck them. them. <laughs> they, because they'll have to focus, and I think you will have more skink drops than they have archer units. Yeah. So or you can just be like, that yeah. unit, I'm going to shoot it off. Oh, you killed skink block. Well, these five now will take care of Or these yeah. four now. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The other thing that I've had a lot of trouble against, I haven't played, so there's still some matchups that we just sort of don't have around here. So I still haven't played against the high armor empire list. Oh, I'm not super worried about it, just because I do have, like, my main killing block is great weapons. Well, then, that, yeah, you're fine. Because I played that recently, and yeah. I don't have any great weapons, and it was a 2,000 point game, so I didn't have couple of the monsters that I would need in. But yeah, the other thing I'm really worried about is ogres that are running Gutstar. Um, to be honest, the Gutstar wasn't as killing as I expected in my game against Jamie. Like, he still did well against me, Yeah. but uh, like when my source came up, it wasn't as big a deal. Like, he, he still destroyed him, but it wasn't like just wiping them out. Like, I tied him the first round. Yeah. So he's changed his list since then as well. Yeah, well, he's running Horde now. But the the big problem I have with them is just that my magic is almost entirely useless offensively. Because I, I, I yeah, don't use your magic. I, yeah. I would think just clear his chaff with your magic and push your Blender Lord into that gut star. Yeah. yeah, and then I get whittled away from combat res. That's the problem. The old because the Blender Lord. We shouldn't though. Yeah. Because so your, even your whites are what strength six. Strength six. Yeah. So you'll be killing more or just as much ogres as he's so killing whites the, and then the blender tips the balance so what ends up happening usually is i'll get in and if he's running it in a horde he's got 54 attacks against my 30. Gross. but he's, he's hitting, hitting on threes and he's wounding on threes or wounding on fours i should say you don't or hitting, <laughs> on, hitting on fours wounding on fours but on so he should get about it would be hitting on fives why not? You, you don't get that minus one hit, right? Yeah, it gives, it gives me a plus one hit. So I'm hitting on Oh, he's not minus one hit. No. So okay. you should no. get 13 wounds, and you get armor saves? Uh, well, five plus. So they Well then, armor. yeah, so he should get eight wounds, and then your Blender Lord almost himself gets eight wounds. Uh, yeah, except he will get... So the way it's worked so far is he runs two or three characters in that unit. So best case, I'm attacking something that has a one plus armor save and a four up ward, usually. First Do you have a champion in the whites? Uh, I didn't in those, I do now, so I have at least one turn where you can attack. Either way, the only way I've ever won that, just because there's so many frigging wounds to go through, is if he breaks, 
And I know that player in particular is running Crown of Command now. So his unit's unbreakable. Well, that means one of his characters then is a little weaker. Has a less protection. Yeah. So, so we'll I, see how it goes. Yeah. But anyway, I've had, I've had some trouble with that. Well, you I add your characters at the end, right? So yeah. if you can guess which character that he's putting his overblock, you can probably put him roughly within that area of. Well, the, he, he puts all of them. I there, think he's got one mod all hard in there as well. No, 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 but yeah, but the one that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know, I know what you mean. Um, but the other thing I'm really worried about is Dark Elves, just because it's really tough to pull out a victory against the uh, Cauldron block. Because there's so, so many points in it. Even if you kill, kill everything else on the table, you're probably looking at a tie. So, any final table predictions? I'm gonna say I don't know the players, mind you, but my guess would be Lizardman, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, plus armor takes it all. Um, I'm gonna say we're probably gonna see dark elves or high elves, and the other contender, maybe maybe demons. So we had one player, one guy who's coming. I can't remember his name. Ron what? Allen. Uh, no, it's not not Ron actually. Someone Ron's really strong in the list too. He just won Lords of War. Um, he is the guy who was uh, top table in last game at Adepticon last year with his demons list. No, no, he did, well, no, he, he does the high elf guy with the high elf. Yes, yeah. Ron Musty's a good player. He'll do well. I don't know. I, mean, he, I don't know if he's running his four frost phoenixes. Yeah. So. I think he is. But yeah. So there's, anyway, there's going to be some really good competition here. So I'm, I'm going to be happy if I finish middle of the pack, which is about what I'm expecting. If I don't get the wind spoon, I'm happy. If I get the wind spoon, I'm going to go home with something. If so I was playing, I'd be the same way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wind spoon, yeah. Second to bottom table, me versus Tomb Kings. Yeah, 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 exactly. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> be awesome, yeah. yeah. So we'll see what the list are. I mean, we've got a great mix of players. We've got some big names. We've got people yeah. no one's ever heard of that are just coming out of the woodworks. Yeah. And we've got a bunch of local guys as well. Yeah. So. Worst case, it's going to be a shitload of fun. Because uh, even afterwards, at the end of the day, first day, we've got to run until midnight. We're going to be running Munchkin, X Wing, uh, uh, Triumph and Treachery. Attack Wing. And by running, I mean there are <laughs> tables for attack this. Wing. Stop saying that. Attack Wing, Attack Wing, yeah. Attack Wing. These aren't formal <laughs> events, we're just going to have tables for it to play. Yeah. Just some fun, some drinking. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. Lots of moves. And yeah, when the bar is open from like 11 o'clock onwards throughout the day. Uh, yeah, so in, in the hall we have the bar from noon to five, and then we can just go to the, the main hotel bar and bring drinks back. It's fine. Yeah, so that's happening. Yeah. Any uh, final comments, guys? I think we run a little long, but... Yeah. Uh, how many subs are we up to now? Uh, we're pushing 90. Thank you for subscribing and watching yeah. us talk about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was great. That was great. I, I didn't expect it to take off kind of thing. I mean, I don't know. It's, uh... Good, good feeling. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I mean, the, all the sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Is that all, all the feedback we got is fantastic. We really appreciate it. Um, I mean, trust me, we are reading everything you guys are posting, every single one of us. Yeah. Um, and we hear you about the length of the battle reports and whatnot. Uh, and so I, I've said this in a few comments, but obviously not everyone's read it because it keeps coming up. We are planning to do a few different variations. We've got the big long ones that are like two two hours long, and those are tournament prep games for the most part. Yeah. Uh, we've got the quick and dirty ones, which are 10 or 15 minutes, and that's usually just like a night at the dojo, there's a bunch of noise, we're just having a good time. Uh, and past that, we're gonna be doing a third type, which is gonna be full length, that's gonna be run in fast forward, and we're gonna do commentary over top of it. And that's either gonna be one of us, or two of us, or however many, yeah. um, just getting together and, and doing commentary on it. So there will be a good mix. For the really long ones, we're probably looking at once a month, just because there is more editing work that's, that has to yeah. be done with them. Um, but yeah, we do hear you, so there is stuff coming with that. Uh, but outside of that, yes, thank you very much for subscribing. I mean, it's what makes this a lot more fun to do, is knowing that other people do appreciate it in Absolutely. some form. Yeah, or listening to us, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's all, all, always nice to rank to someone, right? For sure. Uh, sorry, what were you going to say? Uh, I was just going to kind of close off, I just thought of something. Yeah, uh, tell your friends, if you know somebody who plays Warhammer, let them know that uh, we like to film ourselves talk about Warhammer, and uh, we said in the last battle report, but I think everybody knows the end of times are coming, yes. and I think uh, we're jumping on that. So get ready for the campaign book review, the unboxing of Nagash, yep. maybe a couple of other kits, and then we'll also be running the campaign. Yeah, so, because we got our two undead players and the two good army players, and we're going to recruit others to help along in the campaign. So yeah. that's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys are going to enjoy it. Um, and that's it for me. 
I think you guys covered everything. Uh, just stay tuned, you know, we have a lot of good stuff coming up, hopefully. Uh, yeah. Have a good night, guys. Oh, one thing, though. Uh, <laughs> if you want to see any certain matchups between Hermes, leave it in the comments section below. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, do, we do have a really good collection of folks in Ottawa and nearby. Like the Cornwall guys and there's and dudes over kind of Warhammer addicts, so yeah. I'm almost tempted to just buy an army of somebody. Yeah, you know, like that. So there's a uh, not Empire. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if, if there is an army you want to see or a specific type of list for an army, let us know, yeah. and we can uh, we can try to get something lined up. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, Thanks for watching, guys.